In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can use hotkeys, game controllers, and even the Elgato Stream Deck to control your buttons in iRacing live timing. So, this is going to be pretty straightforward overall. It's very much a similar process for each of our different options. Uh, the first thing I'm going to quickly show you is how to set up your game controller to control buttons in iRacing live timing. So here I am in our remote control panel. Uh, I need to go into edit mode. So F2 to open our edit panel on the right. And then I need to pick my button I want to control. So for example, let's say we're going to use the erase info button and we want to assign that to a particular button on your game controller. I selected it. We can see over on the F2 edit section, we've got hardware input, button device and button number. So first off, I need to select the device, click the little drop down arrow, and then you can see that your controller is now going to be selected. Um, you need to make sure that you've turned on or plugged in the controller before you start live timing. If you haven't, close it, open it, and then it'll appear. And then click into the button number field, click the three little dots on the side, and then we have our windows pop up to, uh, to detect the button press. Now, unfortunately, in my instance, the Xbox One controller and the Xbox 360 controller doesn't use the HID standard for, um, for controllers, um, so that won't work. But for uh, most other types, um, you should have no problem. So uh, make sure it's um, yeah an HID standard controller. But that's the process. Once you select the button, the window will disappear. The button number will appear in the field. And you've set your game controller then to control this race info button. So that's a bit of a flat start in the sense of I can't actually show you that. But you can blame, uh, blame Microsoft for doing their Xbox controllers a little bit differently to the rest. But very quickly, we can move on then to the hotkey. Uh, you may have spied already the very next field underneath is uh, marked hotkey so i've still got my race info button assigned i can simply click the drop down arrow on the right and select my hotkey combination so typically i would do uh yeah you know, i would use one of these a controller shift all these are going to be you know global hotkeys um so it's going to affect um you know any programs uh, that have got hotkeys set up within windows uh, you don't have to be kind of selected on a live timing to have these apply. So, for instance, then let's um, let's set up our first hotkey. So I'll select Control. I've got my list then of keys that I can choose from. I'm just going to keep things nice and straightforward for this example. We're going to go Control and One to control the race info button. So if I come out of edit mode, um, select Control One on the keyboard. We'll see then here in display mode. That the race info option is selected and if i show you the overlay for a moment you'll see that the race info is indeed there so if i manually click back to race go control and one there's the race info panel back again so in terms of getting a hotkey working within iRace and live timing it really is going to be as straightforward as that um, it's going to be exactly the same process for any button that you want um, they're all going to display this hotkey field that you can select so um you could do combinations as well, of course. So you've got one or two ways of setting multiple things happening from a single hotkey press. So I could either go through kind of each button that I want controlled and set it to the same hotkey. So for instance, let's um, set show weather to exactly the same, control one. There it is, control one, uh, exit edit mode. And if I show you the overlay again quickly, and when I do control one, now we've got a race info and the weather. If we go back to race, now we show you the whole thing again. So that's kind of your first option for having multiple buttons affected by one hotkey. But your other option, if we go back to edit mode again, is to um, is to edit the buttons themselves to have more, you know, to affect more things. So for instance, I've got the race info button. I've got it set as control one. If for the weather button, I want the weather to show at the same time. Well, actually, instead, I could just copy the weather. I'm just going to remove our hotkey setting for now so we don't control, uh, fuse ourselves in a moment. Click back to my race info, select the variable field again, drop what I've copied, control V into the weather, and then I've created exactly the same effect again. Race info is still set to control one and it's still going to set the weather to show because that variable is now within the race info option as well. So again, if I just quickly show you that that is indeed um, happening. Um, 
so that's the basic premise of setting up hotkeys and then you could, of course could have you know an infinite amount of variations of what you're doing depending on how you set it up multiple hotkeys controlling multiple buttons um, allowing you to um, to have a lot of control now for the Algato Stream Deck, it's basically going to be exactly the same thing. We're going to use the, the ability of the Algato Stream Deck to assign uh, buttons on the Stream Deck device as hotkeys. Um, Stream Deck I've had for a, a couple of years probably now. Uh, really, really useful. I find it's a cool little toy to have. Um, completely programmable, although you've got 15 buttons here. Actually, you can have folders of in those. So for instance, this one's a folder and now I've got 15 different buttons are a layer below. Um, you can add your own icons, they can actually be animated and depending on the software you're using, you could even have like video previews showing and, and all sorts of things. So it's, it's a really cool little gadget. Um, yeah, it can open um, programs, can open web pages and do lots of interesting kind of macro stuff as well. For now, let's, uh, let's think of a, a basic example that we can get um, it working with iRacing live timing. So let's bring up the configuration page for the Stream Deck. You see this is replicating exactly what's on the Stream Deck right now and it's completely live. So again, if I go into that folder, it updates on my little configuration screen as well. Um, right, we've got a convenient space here. Let's make a, a new folder here for SDK Gaming for live timing. So under the Stream Deck set, uh, section here, create folder. Drag that in. Let's name it SDK Gaming for a moment. If I can type. There we go. Hit enter. No, we don't need the enter on there. Uh, and if I double click, then that takes me into that folder. We've got a little backup button to go back to the same layer. So here's our SDK Gaming folder. Um, perhaps the first thing I could do is have it set to actually open live timing. So scroll down to system, drag open into one of the open spots. Let's name it so we know what it's going to be. Live timing. Click the three little dots to go to your Windows Explorer. Find your live timing file. Mine's just in my downloads folder. And we can see it pulls the application icon automatically as well. And again, we can see that it's displayed straight here. So, um, so already then the Stream Deck will just open your live timing program if that's what you want it to do back to the configuration page. So next thing then, we're gonna be using this hotkey function. So again, under system, see I've got two different options for hotkeys straight away. Let's drag one of each of those in. So hotkey, first of all, well, very simply, we've already assigned a button in our iRacing Live Timing, control one, wasn't it? And that controlled uh, race info. And also we added uh, the weather to that as well, but let's just call it race info for now. Click in the field. Control one on the keyboard. And then if I go back to my um, Elgato, bring the overlay up, and as soon as I hit uh, race info, then that is gonna take effect. And again, it's global, so live timing doesn't need to be selected. You can be using, you know, operating iRacing, whatever it might be, and that will take effect. So really, really simple. Uh, next one is our hotkey switch. So that's like a, a toggle between two different states. A fairly obvious use on that one could be uh, for our show hide options on our buttons. So if I bring up the panel again, uh, let's um, use the dashboard this time. So for the dashboard, uh, I've actually already got two hotkeys set in there already. So show is going to be control and D, hide is going to be control E. So on the stream deck, I can have that within the same one. Let's label that as dashboard. There we go. Hotkey one, that will be turning it on, which was Control D. Hotkey two, can be controlling it, uh, turning it off, which was Control E. And again, quickly show you the overlay again. Hide the eye racing uh, UI for a moment. And if I select the uh, dashboard button, it's just going to bring the dashboard up in the corner there. And again, if I select it again, it will hide it. So it's an on-off state and uh, you can have different icons set for each state as well on or off. So really, you know, again, a huge amount of different things that you could do with that, um, different combinations. You can have multi-functions. Um, so one button press can control multiple uh, hotkeys if you wanted as well. Okay, so let's look to do something uh, a bit unique with the 
Elgato Stream Deck, one of the buttons. Uh, let's create a button that is going to change camera and driver at the same time, for instance. So uh, let's use the nose camera as our example. So F2 to enter edit mode, click on my nose button. Uh, I've got our hotkey down here as normal. So we're gonna set that to control and three. And then to change my driver, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this most exciting button because I know it uses a variable camera car number. So it chooses a camera based on the car number. We're gonna look at Kevin Ellis Jr. who is car number 30. So let's enter that into there. I'm gonna to need to set my hotkey to the same. So control and three. I'm then just gonna close live timing for a moment to make sure that hotkey syncs with that edited variable that we just made. Bring up F4 again. And then on my stream deck, same as normal. Let's add a new hotkey. Let's call it Kevin. And hotkey was control, try again, control and three. Let's start that all over again. There we go, control three, we got there. And then if we click over to the overlay again for a minute, and I select my new button in the top right here, it's gonna jump to Kevin Ellis and on the nose. Let's, um, let's change the icon on there as well quickly, since I may have one prepared. So on the um, stream deck, hit our little drop arrow, Step from file, go into my downloads for a moment, and I may have a picture of Kevin sat there ready to go. And then there you go, we've got Kevin Ellis Jr. set there as a button on the uh, on the stream deck, nice and easy to pick out. And I know that whenever I select that button, it's going to swap straight to him, no matter what we were doing, straight back to Kevin and straight back to the nose again. So that's a little overview of how you can use hotkeys, game controllers, and the Agato Stream Deck to control iRacing live timing. There's so many options available, I'm sure some of you will come up with some really unique solutions. Make sure you jump into our Discord server if you've got any questions or have any issues with getting this set up, and keep an eye out for the next video coming soon.